Hello, everyone. <clears throat> I'm going to get myself brought up on my device here so I can see. There we go. So I can see you guys popping in here. I know I'm a few minutes early. I'm going to give you guys a minute or two to come in here. Make sure everything is working. Hello, Sandra. And make sure my camera is set up okay here. It looks like I'm a tad crooked. There we go. All right, that's working. Hello, Sheila. <clears throat> So I am sorry, you guys. I did not want to put makeup on today. I really just didn't want to do much today, just to be completely honest with you guys. So that is why I did not turn my camera around today. I figured I could talk to you guys while we stamp. Also, I've got so much um, stamping up news to go through with you guys as well that that's going to take up some time. So I figured, you know, I can talk about life as we're doing the stamping thing. Um, so uh, September has really been like one of those months that Stampin' Up! was like, here you guys go. Here's all these things that are going to happen this month and have fun with it. So it was a little bit overwhelming seeing all the things that they decided to throw at us. But in nonetheless, it was awesome because now there's so many goodies that we can get our hands on. Hello, Bonnie. Hello, Mom. So, yeah. Um, uh, mom, 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 mom. So, you know, that's just, that's the whole reason why I didn't start out with me being on screen because I figure, well, for the most part, you guys know what I look like. So, <laughs> I mean, it's just, I just don't want, well, see, when you're on vacation, no makeup at all. I mean, well, I guess it depends on where you're on vacation at. Um, but like, if you're at the beach, oh, no way do you want makeup. I mean, that's just a given. Or if you're sunbathing in some nice resort, no, makeup's just not a thing. Well, I mean, I guess it depends on who you are. But myself, I'm like, eh, no, I would rather, you know, chill out in the sun with no makeup on. But that's pretty much my daily here living in Tucson, Arizona. I don't, I can't really get away from the sun around here. I don't go out, out and lay in it. I'll have you know that. Um, but it's pretty much I go out and I feed all of our animals and stuff. We've got a little farm here and uh, that's enough sun for me is going out and being with my animals. Other than that, I try to avoid it. <laughs> I'm, I'm not trying to get those, uh, the age spots and the skin cancer. So I just try to stay away from all of that. And normally when I do, like when I wear makeup, even just around going in and out of places, I always try to um, make sure I wear sunscreen underneath my, hello, Frida. What did you say? Live dangerously. I just went to the store without, did that, was that supposed to say pants on <laughs> or, or paint on? <clears throat> I'm pretty sure that was probably meant to say pants, right? Frida, <clears throat> yeah, so that's why I didn't flip you guys around today. So I wasn't being antisocial, but, <laughs> but I just, I just didn't feel like doing it today. It was just one of those things. I was being lazy. Oh, it's, it's Labor Day weekend. I can, I can labor myself, right? I can be, I can be lazy and we had a barbecue last night, so that was, I, you know, I, and then we went to, as some of you guys saw, if you're on my uh, personal Facebook page, we took my daughter to Comic-Con here in Tucson, and unfortunately, we weren't there for very long. My daughter wound up having a seizure in the middle of while we were walking around through all the booths and everything, and uh, she's okay, um, and it, it's kind of normal for us. Hello, Karen. 
And so when people like stop and, you know, oh my gosh, should I call 911? No, 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 no. We, we're used to this. You know, my daughter has seizures and it's just a thing. We do have them somewhat monitored right now, but she does have a few breakthrough every once in a while. And I think yesterday, because it was so stinking busy at the Comic-Con, like I was blown away. But what they were saying is this year, why there was such a huge turnout is because it's been in hiatus for the last two years because of, you know, um, and so now that things are opening back up, everybody and their mother's brother was there. Hello, Melanie. Hello, Laura. So there was a lot of people there. There was a lot of people who were dressed up. There was um, myself. I am a major horror movie buff. I love horror movies. Like, you name it, I'm there. Um, and I always have been, even as a younger adult and, um, and in my teens. And there was a lot of people dressed up as horror characters and they were carrying like ratchets and axes and machetes and all this kind of stuff. Not real ones, but nonetheless, some of them were like, not necessarily jumping out at people, but they would like hold it up like they were going to come at you. They were just being silly and whatever. But I don't know if all the characters and having all these people be dressed up and and then all the noise and you're in like this big convention center. So it's echoey. I don't know. But she wound up um, having a seizure. Well, it, it, it wasn't just that, but the way she had it, she knocked my husband down as well because he was standing behind her walking through all the booths. And she went to turn one way, but then stiffened up and went down the opposite way. So it knocked him down and he fell on his knee. And he said today he almost couldn't get out of bed this morning because his knee was hurting him so bad. So I told him, I go, well, you may need to go see the doctor because if you fell on your knee, that, I mean, in the way he works, he has a very physical job. So I just told him to keep an eye on it and make sure it doesn't swell and all that kind of crazy stuff. But nonetheless, she, um... We, we, you know, came home, she had lunch, and she was good for the rest of the day. So I don't know if it was just overstimulation or whatever, but she's all good now. She's been fine today, hasn't had anything today. So we just got to keep an eye on those things, and those are things that are kind of like, okay, well, maybe we can't go to places that are super crazy busy like that because maybe it just overstems her. So anyways, just to kind of clarify if any of you guys read that yesterday, because I know a bunch of you guys commented on there and asking if she was doing good. And she is. She's doing quite a bit better. Um, like I said, nothing, no activity today. So we're all good. Um, so I am Danny Garola here at stampinthepinkbarn.com. Since I kind of got into my whole, you know, ramp before I said even who the heck I am. Uh, what did you say, Melanie? Oh yeah, it was pretty cool. I mean, like I said, there was a lot of people there, but it's pretty neat to go and see all the people dressed up in character. And uh, I mean, of course, there's a lot of comic book characters there. There was actually, because you guys know how big that Buzz Lightyear is right now because of that new movie that just came out. Um, there was a big, uh, I mean, he had this full suit on of the Buzz Lightyear. That was pretty cool. And if you guys saw, I posted a picture. My daughter um, and my husband took a picture with a character that is from The Predator. Not sure if you guys have ever seen that, but that's kind of my husband's thing. Hello, Kay. So they, of course, had to get a picture with them. Hello, Renee. So, uh, yes, looky-loos. Absolutely. That's that's totally what it was. And, you know, and I have to say that the, the lady who was running the booth that they kind of fell into... Um, she was she was pretty awesome and i told her i said i go you you were a rock star i just had to let her know that because she told people she was like move on nothing to see just keep on moving because they did they kind of all stopped no my does my daughter does not dress up i mean she does for halloween but not for the comic-con thing my husband wanted her to dress up like a zombie because sometimes because she said she's nonverbal, she does make this sound that we say is kind of like her zombie moan but he was like, that would have been great to um, to dress her up as a zombie. And I was like, no, because I don't want to bring more, I, I don't know. I, I, sometimes I'm just weird about things. But he was like, well, she would have fit the character. I go, yeah, you're right. But eh, I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I get in my weird moods where I don't want to, like, exploit her. But then again, 
I don't know. So, uh, yeah, so, it, it, I mean, the, the people were really supportive, the ones who it happened right there by their booth. They were, they were pretty cool. Thank you so much, Sheila, for sharing. So let's get into this. Enough about um, my crazy life. And uh, so right now we have the Spooky Treats. This is the Paper Pumpkin in Rotation. I know you guys have heard me talk about this. This is going to make 18 treat boxes, six each of three designs. So the other day I had stopped, um, I was working down at my local VFW down here. I bartend down there um, a weekend out of the month. And I stopped at family dollar and oh my gosh you guys they had my candy corn there it is my favorite and okay so as much as i love candy corn and yes i've already eaten a full bag of these because <laughs> i couldn't my mom brought me a bag of the little pumpkins because she knows that i love the pumpkins also but in this the autumn mix it has these candy corns that have like chocolate on the end and they're so good also they're oh my favorite my favorite so I was like okay I cannot open another bag I've already you know throughout the family we've already devoured one bag of these so I was like okay I'm saving these because I have to show you guys that I got my hands on my candy corns so those are going to stay in my office in here and they're not to leave because otherwise my son will take off with the whole bag and I'll never see it again so, and I know some of you guys do not like candy corn. I'm one of those weirdos. I also liked Peeps also when I was a kid. And I know, like my husband, for instance, he absolutely despises Peeps. He thinks they're the grossest things on earth. And I'm like, wait a minute. Did you never eat s'mores as a kid? What, like, what is a s'mores? A s'mores is, is a marshmallow. What do you think a Peeps is? A Peeps is a marshmallow just with sugar all over it what's to not love about it but I do know there's lots of people who hate peeps and I know there's lots of people who hate candy corns but I love them both hello Cheryl yes see Cheryl even says peeps are nasty I don't know I like the things <laughs> see so there you go and see Melanie you like candy corn but not peeps I don't know it's just I I'm a weirdo like that and, and I think you know what I have heard some people say about Peeps is that uh, Peeps, uh, it's the texture because it's not like a real, can you put a Peeps on a s'mores? Absolutely, why not? <laughs> I mean, I would try it at least. I mean, I would think it would melt just like any other marshmallow. And then you would just have all that sugar and chocolate. I mean, you might have a headache after you eat it, but I don't know. <laughs> Hello, Lois. Okay, so right now I also have up on my blog, um, I also put a link here in the description of this video is my bewitching kit class. I have two options for this. There are some super, super cute cards, you guys. Don't miss out on this kit class. It's going to give you a PDF that you can make four cards. You're going to make eight cards, two of four designs. I will give you the PDF that will come right into your um, email when this, this is a pre-order. So at the end of the month, when all your kits go out and everything, you will get that in an email. You're also going to get YouTube um, private videos on how to make those cards. You're also going to get the pack of four. These are absolutely gorgeous. These are the um, Glimmer washi tape. And look at those colors and these do not have to be used for Halloween like this green is really pretty if you use it on a Christmas card hint hint um, so just saying these are gorgeous they're very sparkly and they're washi tape you're gonna get those in either option that you choose you're also gonna get some of the gingham um, ribbon that is beautiful that is right here and I will tell you we're gonna be using some of this tonight but this is so awesome that you can make it any color for any card that you're making. Say, for instance, you're going to be using Highland Heather. You can take your Highland Heather Stampin' Blends and you can rub it down the end of your ribbon and you can make this now black and Highland Heather. 
So you can really make this match any card color and any card stock that you, that you have and you're using. So you're going to get enough of this. You're not going to get a full roll, but you are going to get enough of this that you will have leftovers to play with other cards as well just to let you know that. Um, I'm also going to be making other cards throughout this month that you could also kind of incorporate with the kit. Um, so like I said, there's two options. One, you can buy all the pre-cut cardstock and all that kind of stuff. That's what's gonna come with the ribbon and the washi tape. Or you can do an add-on and add the actual bundle, which is the bewitching stamp set along with the bewitching, um, and that uh, it's called the, uh, what is it called? The, uh, the witch hat builder or the hat builder. I think it's what it's called, but it's a punch. So just know the reason why I chose to do this for you guys is because I know that there's a lot of you that are new to stamping and you might not have a, um, like an embossing or a die cutting machine and you just don't want to spend that kind of money right now so the reason why i'm offering this up is because this bundle comes with a punch so you don't have to worry about having all the other things the punch will do exactly what you need to get these cards made Okay, so check that out over on my blog, stampinthepinkbarn.com. And then if you go over to card kits right there on the side, there's a little tab. If you click that, it's right underneath my um, graphic. You'll see all about this. Also, we have mystery stamping for this month. So Wednesday the 7th, I will put out the supplies list. That will be over on my blog under mystery stamping and then look for this month's mystery stamping it should be the first one that pops up um and then on the 14th we will actually do the card we'll make the card live together and then on the 21st i will draw the winner of whoever submits their cards um for that week right now as i was saying stampin up is doing an amazing thing for you guys they have done this for uh, this was something that they used to do quite a few years ago um but for the month of september they are doing weekly deals so every week they're going to come out with new deals that go on so this week um it runs through the 7th come the 8th I will post a um, new list of the, the new products that will go from the 8th through the 15th or through the 14th. And then the 15th, there'll be... So every Thursday, watch for new product because this is your time to get your hands on some great deals on some fabulous product. Hello, Sheila. So for this week right now, like I said, this goes through the 7th. Um, we have the Splendid Day 12 by 12 paper, the Summer Shadows Dyes, the Snowfall, Snowfall Accent Puffy Paint, um, Brushed Brass Butterflies, and I will be playing with those tonight on one of the cards so you guys can see those. Um, the Linen 12 by 12 Specialty Paper, the Brushed Metallic Adhesive Back Dots, the Craft Gift Boxes, Pale Papaya um, Open Weave Ribbon, the craft note cards and envelopes um the craft six by six the round and square brads and the classic matte dots are all on special for this week i forgot to tell you i tried last week with the elmer's glue spray oh for the um the faux uh silk called uh card cheryl that's what you're talking about right you sprayed the elmer's um glue to make this card right here right to make the the faux um faux silk oh i'm so glad to hear that that worked that is awesome thank you for letting me know see you like them both too lois so see i'm i guess i'm not the only weirdo that likes both those weird candies <laughs> oh no but then you're a diabetic and you can't eat it oh no well do they make candy corns in sugar-free I don't know. I've never seen it because I've never really looked, but you know how they have a lot of the candies that they're coming out with that are sugar-free now? It might be worth looking into. Okay, the other thing that we have coming up in October, but you need to register now for this. You don't have to register. It's not a um, something that you have to register for, but one of the nice things, if you go in and you register for this, 
um, event is you will get periodic emails that they will just give you kind of some little extra um, things to know about during the event and all that kind of stuff. So, <clears throat> so you can um, register for this or you can just wait until October 1st to get in on the free virtual card event. And so what you need for the, um, the virtual, um, it is the world card making day is what this event is going to be held for. So right here we have three of our bundles that they are going to be making cards with during this event. This is a brand new uh, bundle right here that is not in any of our catalogs. Um, these two are in our catalogs currently, but this warm welcome is a brand new one. You can find out more information about this over on my blog as well. Um, if you buy any of the bundles, they are going to give you a free um, iridescent pearl basic jewels embellishment for free. So just know that. Also, you can pull this PDF off of my blog as well and have this print out. So then you can see the codes to order any of these um, bundles here if you don't have them. Um, also, it has a list of other supplies that you're going to need and then your additional supplies down here, kind of like your um, white card stock, your adhesive that they're kind of like telling you that you need and um, any of your tools, your snips or anything like that, they have that listed as well. Um, this is my current host code. So if you purchase any of these items, um, from my store, which is shopdannygorilla.com. I love that you guys shop with me. I so appreciate your guys' business. Um, but right now, during the month of September, this is my current host code. So when you shop with me, as long as your order is under $150, please use my host code. So yes, this is um, available. This PDF is available over on my blog. So you can pull that off of there and print it off or save it right to your device. Also, is if all that stuff's not enough, they also decided to um, partner up a couple of our stamp sets that we have inside of our Hello Patty, inside of our catalogs right now. They have decided to bring out all six of these. Now they have dies that match these absolutely beautiful. Thank you so much, Cheryl. You are awesome. Um, all these stamp sets, they have now brought out die sets that go with it. You guys have seen me play with this Yeti. I actually, over on um, my YouTube channel, every Thursday at noon Pacific time, I do coffee and cards over there. And I actually played with the little Yetis um, this last Thursday. And this is the card that I made. You can see more details over on my blog about this as well and see the dimensions and all the things that I used, but super adorable. And pre uh, previously, a couple of weeks ago, when I first bought this stamp set before they came out with the dies, I actually f fussy cut this little Yeti when I made my previous card. And now, holy smokes, it is so easy to just pop this little guy in there, use that die, cut him right out, and then he comes out perfect. And then I don't have to spend half the day cutting this guy out because I am terrible at fussy cutting. Same with that little coffee cup that perfectly got cut, cut, uh, die cut out for me. So just to let you know, that can also be printed from my blog as well. Cheryl posted the link in here. It's over on my promotions page. Okay. <clears throat> Let's get that out of the way. Let's get to our winners of last week's cards. I've got those written down here. Okay, so last week's cards. This was the first card that we did. This is You Are Such a Blessing. Now this was using the Rustic Harvest paper. This card is going to Joanne, Joy Ann Schumann. So if you're watching and after we're done with this, if you could send me your address, do it through Messenger, or you can email me at stampinthepinkbarn at gmail.com. You can always email me and ask me anything <clears throat> if you don't do the whole Messenger thing. But this card is going to you, Joanne. It's a very beautiful card. 
And then this is the one that I was just talking about with Cheryl because she tried it. I did it with our adhesive sheets. Now, she was saying that she sprayed the Elmer's glue spray over her designer series paper and applied the, um, uh, oh my gosh, my mind just went blank, tissue paper over the top of it and it, it worked the same way with the spray. So that's another you know way of doing it as well. This is going to Bonnie Bletch, Bletchel, I think is how you say it. I know I saw you just pop on here a little bit ago, so hopefully you're still watching. Um, I need your address as well, and I will get this in the mail to you. So that is You Are Missed. And again, just like that gingham ribbon, I also used the Balmy Blue, and I colored this white crinkle um, seam ribbon to make it match my card. Okay, and then the last one for sharing last week's video, um, this super cute. Now this is another one of those perfect partner sets that we have out right now with this little pig. And I think these colors are so bright and cheery. I'm absolutely in love with this. And I actually had to make myself one of these cards too because I knew I was giving this one away. Um, go to your happy place and stay there all day. Isn't that so cute? And this says happy, happy birthday. This is going to Kathy Beebe, I think is how you say your last name. So there you guys go. Congratulations, you guys. Thank you so much for coming in and following me and watching all my videos. You guys are so awesome for sticking with me. I know I can be a little much. <laughs> I know me best. Okay, so let's get into our first card. Now this one is a very simple, um, pretty easy to replicate and make multiples of um, for your Christmas cards. So this one, I am going to be using the stamp set Trees for Sale. Now, if you were one of those, you know, lucky people who got your hands on the die set that was in our celebrations, I know it was one that sold out um, kind of like mid-month um, of, uh, or maybe it was in the beginning of August. Um, there was a die set that was in the celebrations for this. And hopefully you guys got that before they ran out of them because it is a fabulous die set to go with this stamp set <clears throat> hello Marianne so um hello Lynn sorry I didn't see you pop in here so um I am going to be using this stamp set merely for the um Merry Chris or the Christmas greetings sentiment but other than that there's no stamping on this besides that sentiment okay so what I am coming in with, this is the real red. This is five and a half by eight and a half. And all I'm going to do is simply fold it. Okay, just like that. Now my card is five and a half by four and a quarter. My next layer is basic white now this is four by five and a quarter my next layer is the celebrate everything now the way you can get this paper is it is earned by either hosting a party and being a host <clears throat> or if you spend over 150 dollars you can get this as a hostess gift okay so this is a huge paper pack um, it is inside of the, I believe it's inside of the back of, is it in here? I might be fitting. Oh, no, it is. Okay, so if you go to the back of your um, July, December mini catalog, this paper can be found right here. Okay? So that is how you get that paper. It is called Celebrating Everything. It is a huge pack. You get 48 sheets of 12 by 12 paper. So let me kind of show you because I know it's kind of hard to see the designs, but 
Hence the fact that it's called Celebrate Everything. So there is really paper for every um, occasion in here. Oh. So you get four sheets of each. So this is the one that we're using right now. Look at the back side of that. Oh my gosh, is that not so me? Oh, I was like, I don't want to cut the front part up because I don't want to cut the pink. But look at this together. That actually looks so good together because you've got these little pink candies and some of the pink little holly dots in there that look really good with that paper as well. <clears throat> then you have got this. This is... I'm going to say either mint macaron or pool party. The colors are all on the back here. Um, it looks like there's basic black, crushed curry, granny apple green, Pacific point, polished pink, pool party, poppy parade, and shaded spruce. Okay, so the other side of this... Isn't that cool? Now, I love it when they do the black and white because you can always take one of your blender brushes and you can blend any color on here. You can actually do multiple colors and make it almost like an ombre effect. You could do, make it like rainbowy and look how bright and cheery. These look like little fire, you know, work sparkler th things that I just think are absolutely amazing. Hello, Noreen. Oh. Okay, this one has got some black and white little Christmas trees. And then the flip side is this granny apple green. You guys probably don't see this paper too often um, just because it is one of those hostess gifts that I think it gets kind of forgotten. Again, one of the reasons that I always tell you guys that being a demonstrator is awesome because you have the option to pre-order this and um, get it that way when you're a demonstrator. Look at the little bows on this paper and those bulbs. Isn't that so cute? So lots and lots of ideas with this paper. And look at this. This could be for... Christmas it could also be for a Halloween card and then you've got that yellow crushed curry gingham in there Then there's your Pacific point right there And look at that it almost looks like a wood grain And look at these little Halloween and see and this is what I was talking about kind of with these stars that you could use that paper together because they do just put a hint of yellow star in that that I think that would go really well with that other paper or it looks good with the yellow stripes. So I keep forgetting that I have this paper and that's why I pulled it out because I was like, oh my gosh, you guys have to see this paper. Look at that. Oh, this is that shaded spruce, that green color and then your Pacific point. And look at these fall leaves. Looking at the colors of this paper just really kind of gives you inspiration just by itself. And that's your granny apple green. And I love that there's so much versatility in this set as well. Like, like I said, this set can last you all year long. Look at those. So that's that same pattern as that black and white, but these are already colored for you. And then look at this. Uh, poppy parade little triangles so gorgeous and then you've got these stripes look at that oh are you guys in love yet I mean isn't this just like an amazing pack of paper and then there you go with those those polka dots in all those colors oh, and then those bold red stripes okay so I just wanted to make sure you guys got a peeky of that because I know it's kind of hard to see in the catalog when it's kind of all smashed together in there so that way you have a better look of it even though it's still on camera and you don't get the best of it but it was a little bit better than the catalog. 
Okay, so what did I tell you the measurements of this? No. Card is four, four and a quarter by uh, five and a half. This is four by five and a quarter. Now this here is going to be your three and three quarters by five. Then what we're going to do is we are going to use the real red and the um, white. This is the um, glimmer paper and it's very shiny and very bright and gorgeous. Hello, Patty. You're sitting on the patio overlooking Lake Superior. Well, um, it doesn't get any better than that. <laughs> wow. So this little piece right here is one and one quarter by five, and we're gonna lay that right in the center. And then I have more of these on order because I have one lonely snowflake la left from last year. So I just put more of these on my upcoming order because I was like, once I saw this card, I was like, okay, this I'm making for some of my Christmas cards because this is so easy and quick to make so many of them. Now with these snowflakes, um, you really get a neat iridescent look to them. Hopefully you can see it a little bit better on the big sheet here than you can here. But um, it's very iridescent-y. Now, one of my team members, she has made me a couple of cards. And I'm always like, where is she getting that iridescent um, like paper from? So what she has done is she has taken the um it's called the bow or bow or whatever it's called punch and she actually takes it and she punches in all this little leftover space because you've got a big area right here that you can use to instead of throwing this away you've still got some gorgeous paper right here so, so she uses her punch and she punches out you know just slides that little punch in and punches the little leaves out and then she tucks those leaves in behind like her little sentiment banners or anything like that and it's really gorgeous because you're like whoa that really just changed colors it wasn't just white so don't throw that away use it up we've got punches punch some things out of it and and just do that okay i am going to take a little strip of basic white now this is three quarters by five and this is the only thing we're stamping on besides if you want to stamp in the inside of your card so i am taking my real red oh and i will tell you since i have an extra one of these from um last month i did this pack of paper as a bonus if you spent 75 dollars in my store you would have gotten a free pack of this so i actually ordered quite a few of them to give you guys um when you did your orders and i have one left so that is going to be the gift for um my mystery stamping for this month just to let you guys know Okay, so I'm going to take the greeting from the trees for sale. I'm going to take that Christmas greetings. And I'm just going to eyeball stamping this right in the middle. Just like that. I could have moved that way a little bit, but we're going to call it good. It's not that far off from the middle. I'm also going to grab my inside piece. This is four by five and a quarter. Um, and then I have a little tiny strip here. This is half inch by five and a quarter. And that is just gonna go across the bottom there. But yes, this is one of those cards that you can sit down and just make a bunch of and get them done actually fairly easily because all you would have to do is cut out quite a few of these little strips, just stamp on them, and then glue everything together because that's pretty much all you have to do. These are already punched out and in this little thing, you would just poke them right out of the thing. And when you order these, you actually get 24 of them in a pack. That's these snowflakes. Okay, so now let's get this card put together okay 
and it's very um, easy measurements to remember because it's pretty standard. I didn't do any um, eighths or anything like that. They're all quarters. Hello, Rhea. I was actually thinking about you today, girl. I hope you're getting everything taken care of on those houses. I know it's been quite a chore for you. So maybe your ears were burning today. I don't know, but you were on my mind. Okay, now I'm going to take this little red glimmer strip here and I'm going to put this just right in the center so it is the same width as my designer series paper oh miss miss Patty Klingsporn are you heading back to Arizona anytime soon because I thought you guys normally come back around September-ish. Okay, then my little white piece. But first, before I put that there, I have kind of this big center of the snowflake. I'm just going to put a little bit of glue on there. But the reason why I glue all this together first is because I don't want to place this down and then have one of these pieces hanging past my card. Because that's not going to work. Because then I wouldn't be able to put it inside of an envelope. So if I just lay it, everything together, glue it together first, and then I can see how far the ends of my, okay, perfect. Yeah, I was wondering, I was like, oh, maybe you guys weren't going to come back this year. So that is good to hear. Okay, then this little strip is just going to go right over the top of that. And you might want to use snail to hold that down. I even had my snail sitting right here. Or my stamp and seal. Why do I keep calling it snail? We are beyond snail. We now have stamp and seal. <laughs> a seal, a snail, who knows? Because <laughs> that might hold a little bit better to your glimmer paper, but that, that seems like it's not going anywhere. So I'm going to leave it alone. Um, I am going to be using, these are the adhesive backed seasonal sequins. Now these are in four different colors. You get one that almost looks like an iridescent, like opal. Then you get this green, which goes really well with this card very Christmassy. That would be neat to put on there. There is this that is, does it say what color that is? I'm going to assume that almost looks like Calypso Coral. If I look at Calypso Coral, that really looks close to that. And then we've got these little silver ones. Now, I chose the silver because of the little gingerbread that I have on here. I wanted that to match and kind of make those little gingerbread guys just kind of pop off that paper. So I am just going to take three of the smaller ones and just put those right here in this bottom corner, just like that. Now see, just a, that little bit, they both draw the attention of each other but still make that red glitter and pop off of there. And then there is the inside. And then all you have to do, the only other stamping you would have to do is put in your greeting and you have a super quick, beautiful, shiny, fun Christmas card. Okay? 
You need to get going on Christmas cards. Well, there you go. There. Think you can you can thank me later. Oh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you you've got a Christmas card now that you can do so many things with because this design, I mean, you could throw any paper on the back of there, and even with this dark paper, if you were to do a different color besides this white, you could actually use the white glimmer paper across there and then do something different here and then maybe even amp it up a step and maybe put red in the front of it and then use a white embossing powder to do your sentiment on top of that red paper and then have your white glimmer in the back. I might try that and take some pictures of it and throw that on the blog one of these days because that just really kind of gave me a good idea. But then again, I don't know how that would look with the iridescent guy. I don't know. Just a thought. Maybe you don't have to put the snowflake on there if you don't want to. Okay, so that is um, card number one. So let me get some of this stuff out of the way. And then we are going to, the next two cards are going to be using the Wisteria Wishes. I have really grown to love this set. Um, I had it for a while and I wasn't quite certain that what to do with it because it was like I kept seeing cards using it and they were all kind of the same the same card just with different colors which is fine don't get me wrong but it was like I was kind of getting bored of seeing it and I'm not trying to discourage this set at all because I think once you guys see some of these cards that I make it might actually change your mind because I know they wowed me when I saw how these turned out. Okay, so my card base is going to be Smoky Slate. So this is eight and a half by five and a half and we're just gonna fold it in half. Okay, just like that. Then we have a piece of basic black. Now, I believe this basic black is three and three quarters by five. Then we have a piece of basic white, and this is um, not cut to the right size. Or maybe that's for the inside, hold on. Okay, I didn't cut that to the right size. So, we need this to be at four and seven eighths. by, well, I cut it right that way. Hold on, let me see what I got going on here. Yeah, I cut it right that way. So it is three and five eighths um, the short way and um, four and seven eighths the long way. Okay, so then there's just a quart, uh, eighth of an inch all the way around that just like that so you can just kind of lightly see that um, black little edge there okay here is our wisteria wishes now uh, the colors that I am going to use are Highland Heather and Gorgeous Grape so here are my mounted stamps. And then we're gonna need some scraps of our um, smoky slate. And so what we are going to do, let me bring, my mini emboss out here. So I'm just using this little scrap here and what I'm going to do is with these dies, there is a leaf set right here that have very, very detailed leaves. We're going to cut two of those out. Okay. 
So, Miss Patty Clingsborn, how is the weather there in Lake Superior? Okay, so there is our first. Now, be careful when you're um, pulling these away from the paper because they are very dainty. That you don't want to rip any of those leaves off of there. Okay, just like that. And then there's one little piece right here that you got to try to get that out of there. Okay, there's that. And then let's do one more because like I said we need two of these oh geez if I turn this thing around maybe that'll make it easier on myself Okay, and then I'm going to get this put up and out of the way for the moment. I also need a piece of scrap of my white. Let's take that one little piece out there. I also am going to grab, you can use either a um, blender brush or you can use a dauber, which is what I'm going to use. Or you can use a sponge. Sponges work also. But I am just gonna use one of our little daubers. Now, this is where you kind of want to be careful with this because with these because they are um, fragile, fragile. You just want to kind of take that ink and lightly dab it on there. Okay, I don't like the way it's turning out with the daubers, so I am going to come in with one of my blending brushes because I don't like that. I don't like the way that it is coming out onto that leaf. There we go. That's much better. So we are going to use a blending brush, not a dauber. I just like the dauber because it's a little bit cleaner and I don't get it all over my hands, but it wasn't giving me the look that I was going for. Okay, so there's one. Now, as you can see, when you do this, you really kind of darken up those veins. It's a little bit different over here because I started this out with that other brush, but or that dauber. But you can see kind of the difference on this piece over here and then this where it just really kind of darkens up the veins and i like that look on this gray paper or smoky slate okay just like that Okay, now we're going to set those two aside and then coming back in with our scrap paper we are going to stamp this twice Ugh. so 
So I'm going to take my Highland Heather first and stamp it twice on my scrap. Oops, that one didn't come out well, so make sure you at least stamp it on your paper. Okay, that's better. Okay, like that. And then in the gorgeous grape, now you've got three of these. This is a single one that when you see that when I stamp this on here, it kind of just adds a bit of depth to it because you're actually adding just another darker color on top of it. And it really makes it look a little bit more realistic at that point. Okay, just like that. Now we're gonna die cut those out. But first, we are going to come in how we have these three layers and we have this little bit of white here for the layer of our paper. We need this piece because we're gonna do some more stamping on it. So on this one, what I want to do is I want to dry fit my leaves and see how they're going to fit across the top of my paper here. Kind of like that and now that's not pretty at the moment but that's okay I don't need it to be pretty right off bat I just need to see how far up I need to go with this so I'm gonna take this one and kind of run it a little bit off the edge over here just like that and then this one is gonna come kind of right here leaving a bigger gap over here, and I'll show you why in just a minute. Okay, so that was Highland Heather. Now we're gonna use Gorgeous Grape. And again, do that same. Just like that. Okay, and then move those out of the way so we don't throw anything inside of those. Okay, and now I'm going to grab that die and die cut, not these ones, but the ones that are right over here on this strip of my scrap paper. Now the colors of this, I was kind of thinking of my mom's wedding when she got married way back in the day, um, which it's been, ah, my mom's been married just about the same amount of time as we have. Um, our anniversary is coming up, me and my husband's anniversary is coming up, and I cannot believe it has already been 17 years. Whew, really? Come on now. Where have 17 years of our life gone? Because I think my mom got married the year after us or maybe a couple months before. I don't remember. <laughs> I don't know. It's hard enough for me to keep track of my own. Okay, so there's those two. But their wedding was done in purples and silvers and grays. And this card just reminded me of their wedding when I was designing this. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put this, adhere this straight onto the um, black piece, if I can find what I did with my glue. Maybe my mom will chime in and tell me how many years they've been married. The temperature is 60 degrees. Oh my word. Always cooler down by the water. Yeah. Fog. 
Oh my goodness. I am so jealous, Patty. It has been like 90, up in the higher 90s here. I think yesterday it was still over 100 degrees. Because <clears throat> when I was in town, it was like 102. When is the latest you can get the Halloween kit? Um, the uh, cutoff date for the... I have it written down. Hold on. Let me look. I put it in my calendar, but I forgot to add it to my other calendar. So let me look really quick. I think it's the 17th. I'm pretty sure it's the 17th. And then I will do the ordering. Yes. Saturday the 17th is the last day for the bewitching kit. Um, I will do the ordering on the 18th. And then um, I will get everything cut and by, well, hopefully, I mean, Stampin' Up! normally because of where I live relatively to where Stampin' Up! is, I normally get my stuff within like two or three days. So I will get it um, within hopefully like the 22nd and then I will spend that weekend getting everything cut and then um, I will get everything packaged up by the 25th and then everything will start going out in the mail on the 26th. So things will start mailing the week of the 25th, 26th, because since obviously the 25th is a Sunday, but if I get everything cut and I get it already prepackaged, I can take it down to the post office and go ahead and put it in the um, drop box on the 25th. So then come first thing Monday morning, it will shoot out and start already being delivered to, you know, being on its way. Oh, well, there you go, Sheila. Yeah, I was shocked. The first day I posted it, I already had people buying it. And I was like, wow, for being my first kit, I was really kind of, you know, shocked that people were already kind of jumping on board with it. So that was pretty exciting. I mean, I did put a lot of time and work into that kit. So I hope you guys, well, I don't hope, I know you guys are going to love it because the cards are so stinking cute and I love Halloween so it was kind of like my jam making those okay so I'm going to put this right up here just like that and what I'm doing is I'm not putting glue on all the leaves I'm just running glue down the branches of the leaves because I want those leaves to kind of be lifted to give it kind of like a 3d effect So I'm just running very lightly because I don't want it like coming off the ends. But just like that. And then I'm going to tuck this underneath this leaf here. Okay, just like that. So when that's on that gray that kind of pops because of it being having that black put over the top of it hopefully you guys can see the look of that where you can see that um, the black veins I know it's kind of hard to see when it's far away okay and then with these what we're going to do is we're gonna grab some dimensionals and some minis and I am actually going to just be cutting off, see how this one's a lot longer on this side on the right? I'm going to actually kind of fussy cut through this to make it look like I didn't chop it, like it was just cut that way, just like that. And I'm going to do the same thing for this one. Okay. Cut that raw edge off so it doesn't look so choppy okay same with this kind of come in here and fix this all right so there are our pieces now so what we need to do is see these two branches that hang down I am going to be putting my single ones to the side of that so I'm just gonna kind of lay those there and then with these two 
This one is higher than the other two. That higher one is going to be the one that looks like it's hanging from the branch. So that's why I'm going to kind of just eyeball where I want this one and then make sure I have that there. But I'm going to pop up the one that has the two. The one that has the two. Yeah. You guys see what I'm saying, huh? <laughs> the two wisterias. So I'm going to put that as if it's hanging off of that branch and I'm going to go a little bit higher with it like that. And then this one is going to get glued straight down. Right like that. Okay. This one is going to get some dimensionals on it for that lift. I'm using some of my paper pumpkin dimensionals because of all the people to run out of dimensionals, I ran out of big dimensionals. Like, what? So I was like, okay, I've got to put like five dimensionals on this order that's coming because I can't believe me of all people to run out of dimensionals. Like, that just doesn't happen. Okay, then I'm going to move this up and hang that coming down that vine. And then kind of lift these little leaves up. Just like that. Just kind of set them right on top. And you can come in and you can pick these up and kind of give them a little bit more of that lift that I was saying that kind of makes it look 3D-ish. Okay, and then this one. is going to go right there. Okay, and then the hang in there is going to go right down here at the very, very bottom. in Memento Black. And then, where did my inside piece go? Didn't I have an inside piece? Or did I not? For my inside piece, I am going to take my Wisteria again and grab my two purples. I should have done this when I was stamping, but I didn't think about it. And since these two are closer together and this one's kind of out, I am just going to do my Highland Heather and I'm just gonna kind of take my stamp where I'm not stamping this one over here, trying not to get ink on that. Not that it matters because I'm going to just be kind of placing these right over here in this corner, just like that. And then with the gorgeous grape, just layering that again. Okay, and then we're gonna put this in the inside. You guys see what I just did I had gorgeous grape on my finger well of course mom that you would love this color like I said this card was the idea came from I don't know if you heard me or not but um, this idea of this card came from your wedding colors when you guys got married and I was trying to remember how many years of marriage this year was for you guys because I know you guys just celebrated your um, your anniversary in July. Okay, so don't make boo-boos like I did. Don't get your fingers stuck in your stamp. Okay, 
Okay, now we're going to glue this down. Is it Ninfa? Is that how you say it? I'm probably slaughtering your name. It's probably really simple. But hello, dear. Welcome. Okay, so there is card number two. But this card would not be complete without a little bit of bling. So I am going to bring in the matte black dots. And of course, my take your pick tool is the best for applying our sequins and our embellishments. I want this little leaf out. Okay, just like that. And then we're going to take some of these. I'm going to use one of the big ones and put right over here. Take a couple of the little ones right there. And then maybe right down here. There we go. Okay, so there is our wisteria. I am calling this one hang in there because obviously that's what we put on the front. So I think that just makes those leaves pop even more when you take a little bit of that black and you just kind of go over this smoky slate. I just love those colors. So that is card number two. Okay, so the next card, we're still using Wisteria, but we're going to be going with a little bit different colors and another set we're going to include to give us our sentiment on the front. So I'm going to put hang in there away because we don't need that. Okay, we are going to be using some of the um, gingham ribbon on this next card. Our card base, so the other, let me tell you really quick, the other stamp set and dies that we're going to be using with the Wisteria Wishes is I am bringing in the Sending Smiles for this next card. So on this next card, the card base that I am using is Daffodil Delight. This is 11 by four and a quarter, scored at five and a half. Okay, just like that. My next color is Crushed Curry. Now this is um, three and seven eighths by five and one eighth. My white piece that I need is three and three quarters by five. So again, an eighth of an inch difference. Then we're gonna need a couple of scraps. We need a scrap piece of white and we need some scraps of granny apple green and we also need another scrap of that and I didn't grab any so let me grab that I need another scrap of daffodil so let me grab that I think that's going to be the perfect piece of scrap right there okay our colors that we're going to be using We need um, Crushed Curry, we need Daffodil Delight, and we need Granny Apple Green. And I'm going to move this out of the way so we don't get any smudges on it because I just got it on my hand. All right, so for this one, I need my white scrap, and I need the little greenery, so it's this piece right here. What did I do with that? Oh, geez. It's this one right here for my wisteria. So, 
Normally you think of wisteria hanging down. This is going to look more like um, there's a name for that plant. So in other words, if I was to take this and turn it this way, and if your stalks were, is it called lavender? Maybe it's called lavender that grows up like that. I think this kind of looks like that, but we're not doing it in purple this time. So maybe it's like a cornfield. I don't know. I also tried just to show you guys, I did um, crushed curry and then, and then I took this little stamp right here with the dots and I used um, crumb cake over it to make maybe a fall card. I'm gonna look into uh, playing with that this week. All right, so on my granny apple green paper, I also, scrap paper, I also need to take my granny apple and I'm gonna do tone on tone for this. As you can see, I've already cut this out to see what it looks like. And I will show you that card in a minute because I did that in a different set of colors than what this one is. Okay, so that we're gonna die cut out and we're done with the green for the moment. We'll come back to that because right now I'm just going to get this piece done. Okay, so I am going to use Crushed Curry and my Daffodil Delight on my scrap piece of paper. So with the three of the Wisterias, I'm going to use Daffodil first and just stamp that. And then Crushed Curry, I'm going to come in and do... The darker spots on top of that okay so we can move both of these pieces out of the way because we will be die cutting these but i also want to get everything else stamped while we're stamping okay and then the big word sending from sending smiles i'm using the big stamp sending and on my daffodil paper i am going to our cardstock I'm going to use crushed curry and stamp sending and we're going to die cut that out as well just like that I don't like that so we're going to try it again Okay, that's better. Okay, so we're done with that. We still need these. I need to clean off this so I don't stick my hands in it because we're done with the sending. And then we are going to bring in this white layer that is the white for our card. Put that over here so we can die cut it. So now we're gonna do some stamping on this. So I'm gonna come in with my piercing mat underneath here so I'm not stamping all over my table I never feel like there's enough room do you ever just like crowd yourself in things just start coming at you because a crafters table can never be big enough let's just be honest here because no matter how big it is we're going to keep cluttering it okay so with my white piece I'm going to take my granny apple green and I'm just gonna use these two and kind of exclude that third one. Stamp just like that. And now I'm gonna do the opposite to the opposite side. Take these two shorter ones and go over here. I might need to stand up so I can see what I'm doing. Okay, just like that, perfect. Then I'm going to take my wisteria. I'm going to shut my green because we don't need that right now. Unless we're going to do an inside, which we are. So I'll do that in just a minute. And then take, <clears throat> take my... Um, do you guys see what I did? I never put my little piece back here. So let me show you guys something really quick. Now on this one, see how you have this strip here? 
Most of you probably know this, but I like showing this periodically because there's always new stampers that don't know this. So on the back of our stamps are these little stickers that that's how you put this label right here on. Well, you can use the one that doesn't have any wording on it and put it right in here. So then when you're, when I've got these two laying out here, obviously I can see one is lighter and one is darker, but there's also like if you had a couple of greens sitting out here, see this green little strip in here? That's when I can see that that one, because Granny Apple Green and um, Old Olive look very similar when they're sitting here and they're open. Like if I was to take that and let me just show you just for instance, if I was to have Old Olive open, yes, one is darker, but when I'm stamping, I'm not really paying much attention to light and dark because they're really pretty similar. I can look at this and say, oh, okay, that's a little bit darker. That looks a little bit old olive-ish. And then I know what my old olive looks like versus my brighter granny apple green. But I didn't do that in this one. So let me show you how you do that. So this is my crushed curry here. So on the back, you have four little stickers. So your first one's going to be in English. And then I'm not sure what those other languages are but there's this bottom one right down here that is blank and I'm just gonna pull that up just like that and then when I open up my stamp pad I just take this and lay it right in that little groove and normally I use my take your pick tool to hold that down and so when I hold that down, I can take it and then just kind of lightly push that down in there. Just like that. Or even with this end here, push that down on there so you know that it's stuck. And then now I can see the difference. This one's a lot lighter than this one. Just to kind of throw that out to you guys. So I am using the daffodil. And I'm gonna use just the two on the side. And then the two on this side. Just like that. And then the darker, which is the crushed curry. Just like that. And then we'll move that aside up with our card. And then with my card base, I'm going to use some Granny Apple Green. And I'm not going to go this that high, but I'm still going to do the two over here on the bottom. Come in with my daffodil. And stamp those like that. Crushed curry. And again, just to add a little bit of something on the inside of the card. And then now we're done with our ink. Get those out of the way. Okay, let's get this in the inside of our card since it is done. Now let's get to die cutting these pieces. So in order to get this to go through this machine, I'm just gonna cut this excess off so we can get that to go through. Okay, that needs to go there. We need to grab the dies for this set. We need this little stock piece here for the green. Okay, 
Okay, just like that. So then there is our little green piece there. So we're gonna set that aside. Now let's cut our little yellow wisterias with this die here. So there's those. And then we need the sending. Yee. I actually do like this side better. Now that I look a little bit closer at it. Okay, so let's grab the sending. Now with this, you've got quite a few different options when it comes to your sending. You could cut that sending out very, very thin and have it be very tiny, but that's not what I'm gonna go with. Because I've stamped it with the darker color, I still wanna see some of that lighter behind it. So I am going to use the one that looks more like a background layer for this. Okay, and since I've already got my piece of washi tape, I can just set that right down. And then okay, cut that out. That's all of our die cutting. I had my little brass butterflies sitting out here and now I see they're not here so hold on a second let me grab those because we are going to be putting those on this card there they are now remember those are on sale this week for our um, weekly deals these bra brushed brass butterflies whew, don't say that real fast um, are on sale this week so grab yourself some of those because you're gonna love those Okay, there's that. Let's get this off of here. Ah, I'm out of my water. Okay. Okay, now what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and glue these two pieces together. small eighth of an inch margin around this okay just like that now to get a dry fit for this this is gonna go here and this is gonna go here but first I'm going to take my piece of gingham cut it a little bit longer just kind of run it right across the bottom there and then with tape I'm just going to tape that on the bottom and then pull the other side up and tape it okay like that now with this little piece we're going to use some dimensionals and I have just a little bit of scrap left down here which is going to be perfect for two little 
strips like that to go right on this little stock and that little stock Same thing there. That's why I say never throw your dimensionals away because you always need a little tiny something to go on a card and then you're looking everywhere for something little enough and these little scraps are perfect for that and I'm kind of a pity pincher so I always feel like something always has a purpose well lo and behold they do okay so now this is gonna go right on the center here just like that okay and now these can get a look, couple of these little minis. Okay, just like that. are going to go right on top of that green okay and then our little sending is going to go right across here now where did I put that little white piece that I cut okay so I have a little piece of white left over here from where I cut out that um, wisteria and I'm going to use the, now you have lots of options with this stamp set here. You've got all these words. So you, I put the, I'm going to put the sending across here and then you can say, I'm going to put love and big hugs, but you can say birthday wishes, a note of thanks, a card to say hello, comfort and strength. Now, these ones I wouldn't use because they're a little too long and they would cover up a little bit more than what I would do. But for any card, you've got smiles across the miles, all the good luck your way, sunshine to brighten your day. So you've got some great little sentiments inside of this set here. Um, like I said, I'm going to use the love and big hugs. And I'm going to use my black memento. And I'm just going to do this very tiny strip of this and then cut very very close over here So just a very, very tiny, straight to the point, no hubbub, little piece. And now I need, this is going to sit right across this little greenery. So I only want a dimensional down on this corner. So I'm going to use one of my minis and put right down here, just like that. So it's not seen, so it's perfect for that. And then on here, I'm going to put a dimensional down. So if I hold it like this, I'm going to put a dimensional up here on this top part of the G on the back side and on the little loop of the G and the same on this S over here because that, that's what's going to fit on the sides. And then maybe one more up here on this little curly part of the S.
and then I'm just going to dab some glue right in the center here because that'll stick right to that greenery. So I'm just going to kind of tip that because I don't want to cover too much of my gingham because I still want to be able to see that black and white because that's kind of the whole point of doing this in the black. Put a little bit of glue on that end because that's what's going to stick over here on the green just to hold everything in place. And that's going to go right there. Okay, this is going to go on the top of that. Okay, now we're going to add some flutterbys. All right. So I don't stab myself because there's been times that I've nicked the back of my arm using this thing. And definitely do not poke an eye out because that would be pretty dangerous. Okay, let's take, actually, I need the pokey end because I need to get up underneath these little guys. Let's take a couple of these little butterflies. I'm gonna put one right there. And then go right up here. And then another one over here. There we go. Let's push my little flutterbys down. And then there is the inside of that card. Okay, so that is the one that I did in the yellows that I told you guys that I made one yesterday um, in a different variety of color. So let me show you that one because how could I not make this card? And honestly, you guys, I do not, I kind of hate the color yellow, but yesterday when I was making this, I thought how cool would it be with that black and white gingham with the yellow? And now looking at it, I think it really turned out pretty, but wait till I show you the other one and you can decide which one you guys think you like better. Um, this is very bright and cheery, but of course I had to make it in polished pink because you guys know me and my pink. So I did pink and melon mambo for this one. The lapines. Yes. <laughs> um, so yeah, this one I did in pink yesterday, but then as I was making, I was like, okay, hold on a minute. I, again, I'm not a big fan of yellow, but it really just was like, okay, I need to make it in yellow. And it's really hard to see on camera, but I did put a little strip of the Melon Mamba around that as well. And maybe moving it up, you guys can see it a little bit better. I don't think I put anything, no, I didn't do anything inside of that one. but then you can get a close-up shot of that and see that. And then here's the yellow, get it close up. So what do you guys think you like better? Do you like the yellow or do you like the pink? They're both really pretty. I think they very much turned out so well. Okay, and then here is card number two. Do a close-up of that as well. And then here was card number one. With all that sparkly gorgeousness. And then that iridescent from that snowflake. Well, I have it a little bit backwards here, so maybe I need to go this way. There we go. One, two, three. So I hope you guys liked tonight's cards. I think they turned out 
quite beautiful. Again, a pretty easy concept. That Christmas card would be one of those go-to cards if you want to make a bunch of easy but beautiful cards. Um, best cards I've seen using this bundle. Well, thank you so much, Rhea. <laughs> I really was like looking at it and, I, and I've seen people make cards going both ways, like going upwards. I really love the card that is inside of the catalog um, for this set that they did um, making it look like it was Christmas because I love the versatility and let me find that card because it really truly does add a whole different element to this set. Um, where was it? Now I know a lot of you guys have this catalog and a lot of you have probably seen the card that I'm talking about but I really think it's worth showing since I'm showing off this set. Oh, and of course, it's not in here. I don't know where I saw it, but there's a... Oh, you know what? It's back here. Didn't they use it on the bundle, maybe? I don't know. I'm telling... Oh, right there. I was going to say, I'm telling you, I know I saw a Christmas card with this. So see, they took this stamp set right here, the trio of, of those Wisteria, and they made a Christmas card with that. How simple is that and how cute to make something kind of different. They also stamped these little quarter panels back here with just using that tone on tone, which looks like that's probably um, gray granite maybe because I don't think that's crumb cake. I don't know, but just a different kind of look using this same set to make it a Christmas card as well to make those look like little Christmas trees. I thought that was pretty genius. But of course, leave it to Stampin' Up to have something just be out of the box and out of the norm to really throw you kind of like, whoa, they did it again. So thank you guys so much for spending your evening with me. It has been a pleasure bringing these cards to you guys. Again, when you shop in my store, please use this month's host code. Don't forget to go over to my blog and check all the goodies out under the promotions. Also check out that card kit that I have over there. It is going to be amazing. I've also taken some pictures of some close-ups to just give you a little sneak peek of some of the cards that I have designed for you guys. Um, and one of you lucky winners are going to, well, three of you lucky winners are going to be winning these cards next week. All right, you guys, take care of yourselves. And I will see you guys on Thursday for my coffee and cards over on YouTube at 12 p.m. Pacific time. All right. Thank you guys. Bye-bye.